There are certain games that go down in infamy. Sonic the Hedgehog 2006 was a death blow to a video game titan that had just jumped to 3D with relative ease. Metroid Other M was a game that tarnished a franchise in the eyes of its creator and its fans, leading to a sluggish pace of releases. Battle and Wonderworld was the product of oversimplification and will most likely be responsible for Yuji Naka's career ending. And yet, one set of games that sits alongside these in infamy doesn't share something with the rest I just listed. They aren't remembered poorly, but fondly. One of those games would be the subject of my critique. As the Nintendo PlayStation had failed, something new had arisen, something unholy, and something that would go down in both obscurity and infamy, the Philips CDI. With a launch lineup of games consisting of Batgammon, Battleship, and Connect 4, this wasn't a video game console, it was a collection of digital board games and audiobooks. And yet, four games stood out from the rest. Hotel Mario, Link, The Faces of Evil, Zelda, The Wand of Gamelon, and Zelda's Adventure. While Zelda's adventure was a live-action mess that could die in obscurity, the others got a new lease on life in the early 2000s and even up to today. What's for dinner? Serious? Spaghetti, 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 I don't know. Huh? Here's your popcorn. Oh, thanks! YouTube poops let this old series of games have a new lease on life, where people would remix their cutscenes with some incredible effects. I'll leave all the poops I used here in the description. This is why these games are remembered fondly. The laughable, horrible cutscenes allowed people to express themselves in creative ways. From the birth of Sentai mixing to the addition of crossover memes like the ones in Sky Had a Ouija, the Zelda CDI games sparked a huge part of the early internet. And without them, meme culture probably wouldn't exist, or if it did, it wouldn't be the same. These cutscenes are the reason why any amount of our modern memes are able to exist. Without them, the modern internet would probably be very different, but that isn't all the game had to offer. Despite what you may think, the CDI was actually capable of playing actual video games and the Nintendo properties have some of the weirdest gameplay in their respective series. Hotel Mario is a side-scrolling game with the goal of being to close all the doors in the hotel. Zelda's Adventure was the most normal of the bunch, with it being a top 10 2D Zelda game like most of the games that came before it. The other two Zelda CDI games follow the lead of Zelda 2, Adventure of Link, but also make use of an inventory for throwable items. However, unlike in Zelda 2, the co collision on the 2D plane Link or Zelda moves on isn't always clear. The team decided that having 2D painted backgrounds was a good idea, or rather the higher-ups did, for more info check out What Happened by Matt McMuscles. This was done to make the game look more modern, as was the choice for a 2D perspective instead of a top-down view. However, this leads to unclear collision detection most of the time, and can mess with my 2D platforming muscle memory from games like Metroid, Mario, and Sonic the Hedgehog. It isn't too bad in a lot of areas, but there are some really garbage places as well. A lot of the enemies have erratic patterns of projectiles will hit you no matter what, whittling away at your very few hearts. Some enemies can't even be killed without certain items, and if they can be killed without an, without an item, some enemies take a million hits to kill with your sword. This makes the combat incredibly frustrating, it means that the main thing that you'll be doing sucks to do most of the time. The best word I could use is clunky. Actually, in Zelda 2, sometimes the combat could be a little frustrating, which I don't even need to say is a bad thing for a game like this. This, and another reason that I'll get into a bit, is why this is the first game that I have yet to complete for a review. Not 100%, not even any percent. I just couldn't bring myself to do it, it just wasn't even due to lack of time either. 
While yes, this part of the script is being written on October 9th, Dread is awesome by the way, I expect a review, uh, I stopped playing sometime early in September. The other aspect that totally killed this game for me was the lack of guidance. In Zelda 1, there was little to no guidance. However, that was pretty reasonable to expect players to simply find areas most of the time. Here, things are hyper-specific, with little to nothing to tell the player what to do. Even with a guide I found online, I was incredibly, incredibly lost on multiple occasions. It doesn't help that the game was frustrating to record, thanks to one of my monitors quitting this summer. The cutscenes in context make about as much sense as they do out of context, and that's perfectly fine. The honest became the things I looked forward to the most when I was playing this game. Despite not realizing there was an item menu for a while, I also really liked the item selection that this game has. Different key items and projectiles make the game a little bit better, even if it causes it to be a bit grindy at times. Overall, what I have to say about this game is that it's better off left with its sole legacy, being the cutscenes. With a few redeeming moments outside of those cutscenes, I'd say that this was a pretty horrific experience. Get it? I couldn't even bring myself to finish it for crying out loud. So let's answer the question that I posed in the title. Link, the faces of evil. Is it good? Well, no. Like I mentioned before, there were very few redeeming moments outside of the cutscenes. And, of course, the combat, which is what you'll be doing most of the time in this game, isn't very fun. So, no, it is not nearly as good as the community that surrounds it. Now, before I go, I would like to announce something really special. So, uh, do you remember that Doom video that I did a while ago? That, that one where I asked if it was good? Well, you'll notice that this video kind of shares a title with that one, at least a little bit, naming scheme. So, I want to turn videos like this into a mini-series, or even a full series. Just a bunch of smaller reviews that, you know, I just don't really have a lot to say on or couldn't bring myself to finish. So, that's what exactly what we'll be doing. I don't have anything else to say except for Happy Halloween, so yeah. I guess I'll see you guys next time. Take care, guys. Happy Halloween.